I want to talk to you today about RTDs and the three wire and the four wire connections of an RTD. We should all know what an RTD device is and what it does. It's a resistive temperature device that is used to measure temperature. It's usually placed in a circuit called a Wheatstone bridge. And I've built a simulator in Multisim to simulate a Wheatstone bridge. So you could see that this is one leg of the bridge and another leg and another leg. And here's my RTD. Now what I've done was I included some resistance in series with this 100 ohm RTD so that I can simulate lead resistance because one of the problems with an RTD is that the lead resistance can affect the accuracy of the temperature that's being measured. So I, I, I put these 5 ohm resistors in series because many times an RTD first of all has somewhat fine gauge wire um, going from the RTD device to the controller and because it's a fine gauge wire the resistance tends to be higher in those wires. So I'm using 5 ohm of lead resistance on each lead to really give you a more, a, a more dramatic sense of, of how much error is in this circuit. So essentially I built this Wheatstone bridge with 100 ohm resistors. The RTD is 100 ohms and that's referenced at 32 degrees F. Uh, adding 5 ohms of lead resistance on each lead makes this circuit 110 ohms. Now we can calculate that out because there is a formula for doing that where V out, which is this voltmeter, this is the voltmeter that's going to measure the bridge as to whether it's in balance or not. And if it's in balance, it should be zero volts. So it's V out is equal to V source. And our, I'm using 10 volts as my source. And I did that just to make the math simple times and then it's R2 which is 100 ohms divided by R2 plus the RTD minus the source voltage times a half. The reason you do times a half is because I'm only doing this half of the bridge and I know if I did the calculations on this just using Ohm's law I would have 5 volts dropped here and 5 volts dropped over here. So V out is equal to 10 volts times 100 divided by basically 210 so it's 100 plus 110 minus 10 volts times 0.5 which is 5 volts so my V out with the lead resistance in the circuit is going to be 238.095 millivolts I can actually power this circuit up and show you that the actual voltage reading I'm getting is 238.095 millivolts. This circuit is being simulated right now and is actually being is actually running. So let's turn this off because right now I'm basically using a two wire RTD. So what if I have a three wire RTD? How does the circuit look different with a three wire RTD? Well, the difference is, and I'm going to come in and I'm going to remove this wire. So I'm just going to delete that wire. And the third wire, so here's wire one yet, wire two. It still has its lead resistance in it. But the third wire now gets hooked to our measurement circuit in this fashion. So I'll connect the third wire to our measurement circuit. Now, Something you got to keep in mind is that a voltmeter or any kind of measuring equipment other than a current meter has a very high input impedance, meaning that the resistance of this device is giga ohms, and some of the digital meters today are tera ohms. 
So basically there's next to no current flowing in these wires. However, take a look at what's happening here. I'm making the measurement now from this point to this point, which means the 100 ohm fixed value in my bridge and this 5 ohm lead resistance are in series and on this side the 100 ohm fixed value of the bridge and the lead resistance are in series so that when I measure this voltage all I'm going to be measuring is the voltage across this 100 ohm resistor because this should cancel out so if that's true I should read 0 volts when I turn this circuit on and when I turn this circuit on you'll see that I'm reading 275 picovolts, which is essentially zero. Now, this three-wire RTD circuit will work just fine, provided that the lead resistance of these two leads are the same. If one of these lead resistors are different, if the lead lengths are different, therefore making the lengths or the resistance of the, each lead different, you will still have errors because this will not be 105 ohms, this will not be 105 ohms, and you'll still get some errors. So the three-wire RTD, where you have wire one, wire two, wire three, is only accurate if the lead resistance of these two leads is the same. For most industrial applications, the, the difference or the error that you may get off of these devices is neglectable. So the third wire, there's no current draw on this because of this high impedance, is used to eliminate the lead resistance so that you have the same resistance on each side of this bridge. That's where the third wire gets. Now there's another type of RTD that RTD is a four-wire RTD. Let me turn this off. The four-wire RTD circuit will look like this. My RTD is out here, and I have it set to 110 ohms now. Let me reset this to 100 ohms. And I showed the lead resistance as 5 ohms again. Only this time... I have a constant current source and the four leads on my RTD. This type of connection does not usually get connected into a Wheatstone bridge configuration. The four wire connection is known as a Kelvin connection and it, it was named after William Thompson Lord Kelvin who invented this system. So here we have again a constant current source and what that constant current source means and I have this set to 100 milliamps is that no matter what this load resistance is this will provide 100 milliamps. So with 100, and t with 100 ohms as the RTD if I turn this power on and look at the voltage look at I'm measuring the voltage drop across that resistor and only that resistor so if I turn on a hundred milliamps current source I should get 10 volts across this hundred ohm resistor so when I turn this on and look at the voltage I can read 10 volts so that 10 volt reading knowing that there's a hundred milliamps flowing tells me that this is 100 ohms this is a series circuit. The lead resistance is in series with the RTD. The current is constant in a series circuit. So 100 milliamps is flowing through R2. 100 milliamps is flowing through RTD. 100 milliamps is flowing through R3. If I measure the voltage across this RTD, I can then calculate the resistance of that resistor. Kelvin connections are used a lot in measuring high currents where you might have a current shunt 
and then the current shunt has connections for a voltmeter on it so that you're measuring voltage across that device based on the current flowing through it. And you can do the calculations. If I look at a table, and there's a table of RTD values versus temperature, and I downloaded one, and I'm going to make this available to you. This particular table shows me temperature, and, and you can see it's, it's a fairly large table here as I scroll down through it. But I, I wanted to focus on just everyday normal temperatures. I can see that at 32 degrees, this is 30, 31, 32 degrees, it is 100 ohms. That's always our reference point. If I go to 33 degrees, the resistance changes to 100.217 ohms. 34 degrees is 100.434 ohms. So as I look at this it, and do some of the math, and you can look at this math on your own, it's because it's fairly simple. It's just basic Ohm's law and a couple of proportions. I'm getting something that tells me that it's about 0 0.0217 volts per degree. So if I make this RTD 110 ohms, let's make this 110 ohms. Let's see, 110 ohms, if I look in my chart, 110 ohms is going to be oh approximately 78 degrees it'll be a little more than 78 degrees so let's take a look at this so I'm going to measure the voltage across it I got hundred milliamps flowing through this this circuit and I measure the voltage across that hundred and ten I get 11 volts I already said that it's 0 0.0217 volts per degree. The temperature, therefore, is going to be the red voltage, which is 11, minus my reference voltage, which is going to be 10 volts, because I'm referencing this circuit at 32 degrees, which is the ice point, divided by the number of volts per degree, and then I'm going to have to add the 32 degrees because my reference is in zero, my reference is 32. So if I take my 11 volts minus 10 volts reference, divide that by the 0 0.0217 plus the 32, as you do the math, you will get 78 degrees. You could work it the other way and say, I've got a voltage of 11 volts, I've got a current of 100 milliamps, the resistance is reading 110. So the circuit is different with a four wire connection however I have no effect now on lead resistance whatsoever so this lead resistance can be different than this lead resistance and I will get the same value no matter what it is because I'm reading the voltage across this resistor I hope that makes sense to you and uh, if you have any questions about it please feel free to reach out to me